So we'll go to line 13 and we'll say this string that is being returned by uh, the input function that has to be converted into an int and we have already seen a pattern that helps us do this we will use a nested function so we will do int of input of first integer and remember when we do nested functions the inner function gets executed so we will call the input function and whatever string object it returns we will convert that into an int and then we will do the same over here with the second integer. Now let's run the modified code by clicking visualize execution. So we'll walk through the steps again but we'll do it a little bit faster since we've already seen this execution. We click on next and the def statement is like an assignment statement and the red arrow jumps to line 13. Now we're waiting for an input, so let's again enter 10. Remember the input function is going to return a string, but then we're immediately going to convert that string into an int. So imagine what's going to happen. I will click on submit, and you see A is referring not to the string 10, but to the int 10. That string has been converted or cast as we sometimes say cast into an int similarly with b we enter 0 that is treated like a string but then cast into an integer now on line 16 when we call this function with these arguments everything should work out just fine i go to uh, line 1 again and again, I am no longer in the global frame. I am now in the is multiple functions frame where I have variables n and m initialized to those same objects that were given to me as arguments a and b. Again, Python is not enforcing that these really are integers. Fortunately, they happen to be integers. So now I can click on uh, next and jump to line 9. Now I can ask the question, is m equal to 0? Well, m is the integer 0, and of course that is equal to 0. So now the red arrow will come to line 10. And now we are ready to return from the function. We are going to return the value false. So when I click on next, Python Tutor does something very nice to help me visualize what's about to happen. I click on next. And Python Tutor creates a little variable. This variable is just for visualization purposes. And it shows it in red so that it's very clear to you that this is not a variable that you created. And it's called that variable return value. And it's just referring to the Boolean object false because that is the object that we want to return. Now, what is going to happen to this object? Well, this object is the value that line 16 was waiting for. It said if whatever object is multiple returns to me, if that happens to be true, then I know what to do. But currently I'm on line 10. So let me click on next and see what happens to this red arrow. I click on next. And the red arrow jumps a little bit confusingly to line 19. But slightly helpfully, the green arrow, which indicates the statement that just executed previously, is on line 16. So what's happening here? Let's unwind. Let's go back. We were on line 10. We were returning the value false. That value was being consumed on line 16. And then it was like saying, if false. Since this condition is not true, we jump to the else case, which is really on line 19. That's where the body of the else case starts. So when I click on next, Python Tutor is doing maybe skipping a step and showing me directly that I have moved to line 19. This can be quite confusing. But I want you to realize that with this link, you can replay it as many times as you like until it is clear. 
Now on line 19, we're ready to print. So we are going to print that A is not a multiple of B, namely that 10 is not a multiple of 0. So try this a few times until you are getting the hang of it. I encourage you to click on edit this code and maybe change some of these numbers. Check all these uh, doc tests and try some of your own and make sure the function returns what you're expecting it to. For the case when the arguments were 10 and 0, what we just tried out, we saw that the function does indeed return false. But check it for other values.